they didn't respond to it. I told them we were going to open the tables eight and go through this process again, and they, they didn't know it, so um, they're happy with their work. Well, thank you to all involved, especially for those who uh, made a special effort to come tonight. Uh, it means a lot to us that, that you're here. Uh, this committee of uh, board members is a cross-section of our school district. It represents varying opinions from supporters and opponents of the 2013 bond. I'm very proud to say that uh, the focus was on our students, on the, the facilities, being fiscally responsible, our community and developing not only a plan, but also a long-range plan. This group listened attentively. They reviewed the long list of needs. They asked a lot of questions in order to gather the information needed to develop the bond proposal will be presented tonight. Three words that I can think of that describe the work was collaborative, committed, and a sense of community. At the end of the meeting, when it was time to make the difficult decisions, I feel that this committee was well prepared to make those decisions. Just a brief look at the process, thinking back to February when uh, we, we asked our consultant, PBK, to begin the facilities condition assessment. That process ran uh, to the 1st of April. Our, our meetings started there April 8th. I had one week skip, and from that point on, of April 22nd through the end of May, this meeting met obviously uh, every week to do this work. So again, we're very thankful to each member for the commitment they made to, uh, to attend and be a, a great participant. I want to introduce the committee members that uh, graciously agreed to present to us tonight. And that's Bill Lincoln, <coughs> Sue Turnage, Mark Wood, John Cope, and Kristen Wheatley. And at this time, I would like to invite Bill Lincoln to the podium to begin our committee presentation. Thank you, Dr. Brown, Mr. President, board members, staff members, and fellow committee people. Um, we had a, a, a really uh, large task before us. Uh, the uh, facility condition assessment was sobering. Uh, we found over $450 million worth of needs in, in this district. <clears throat> and when we say needs, the way I would describe that is that uh, a need is something that any prudent person would, uh, were they able financially to do so, would fix or repair or replace uh, because the, the wear and tear of their car, their house, uh, their stuff. That's what I'm talking about. A, a prudent person would go ahead and do that. and. Uh, Needless to say, we knew from the beginning we did not have $450 million to spend. And so it was uh, uh, quite a uh, task that we had to cut that down. And our initial uh, uh, target was $150 million. And um, that, was, that was brutal. Um, we, we, uh, we just, in, at the end, we just couldn't get there. Um, but we we did take a hard look at uh, all that needed to be done, and we made what we believe is the best uh, decision we could make and be fiscally responsible. And that uh, what that ended up being a uh, a combination of repairing and replacing. Um, and so uh, some some other folks will follow up and, and give you some details on that. Uh, Right. Mike Seal made a uh, presentation to us about the, uh, the money at hand, uh, the finances of the school district, and, uh, and he gave us much broader than what you see here before. Uh, one of the questions we asked, though, is if we don't pass this bond, what are we going to do? And the answer is the money will come out of this budget that you see before you, which is the maintenance and operation budget. And uh, try as you might, uh, no matter if you just glance at this or if you get go into great detail, which we did, um, there's really, really not a lot of give out of this budget. Um, this reminds me of the older sister for Alice in Wonderland trying to slip that glass slipper on her foot, big foot. 
uh, it's just not going to go in there. Um, we we know that this bond needs to pass because other than that, otherwise we will be paying for things that have to be fixed by the end of this budget. Mark. We also took a look at the demogra demographics uh, uh, forecast. This uh, we know that uh, the ISD is going to grow. I, I confirmed just uh, yesterday with uh, City Manager Paul City that we're, we're fixing to build 225 single family homes just north, uh, just actually just south of uh, Halton High School, and about and, uh, almost 900 apartments uh, there. Um, so there's going to be some more kids, and, and of course, that's just a drop in the bucket. What's really going to drive things is all us old users like me dying out there and, and somebody else coming in and buying the house and having kids on it. And that's what's going to happen. And that's already started uh, in, in an old place like Harvard. So we got scads of houses over there built in the 40s and 50s, and, and they're full of families now with little kids all going trying to go into West Burton. You we know about that. Um, this is an attractive community because our school district is attractive to people moving in this district, and so we're going to grow. Uh, nevertheless, I want you to know, we did consider this information. This was part of what we looked at and part of what went into our, our uh, recommendation. But we know we've got to clear some space out for future bonds, and that, that was impactful to have this information. But the, bond that we've recommended to you tonight does not do anything for future future students. This is all stuff that we, we, we've got to do now. And uh, as, uh, as Dr. Brown uh, said, uh, uh, Michelle uh, came in here and, and popped her whip on us and, and it was a good thing she did. Uh, uh, Michelle owned the process. We owned the content. And uh, that was as it should be. And she was very professional. Appreciate that. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, uh, Board, for bringing her in. Um, there was collaboration. And, and collaboration doesn't just happen. It happens out of goodwill. And we had a ton of issues. Uh, I was just adamant that we couldn't build any new schools until John Cook uh, challenged me. He was on my table. And he said, well, if we don't start building some new schools pretty quick, we're going to wake up and we'll have, we'll have, uh, be building three, trying to build three new schools all at once. And uh, John, you were right. And uh, that was just a, an example of the discourse that took place on these tables. We, we started off with uh, everybody, everybody was on their own table. Everybody made their own suggestions just like they was God. And we, and we were, we were going to hear, here's how we, what, what would I do? And then we, we worked through our tables and then we joined tables. And once we got uh, the format of four tables all together and made our presentation out of that, it became pretty clear that uh, something had come together uh, pretty clearly. We still had some, some work to do, but uh, Michelle saw that and uh, and we we worked from there. It was a wonderful experience. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for talking me into it. I was so bitter uh, after the last election. I decided that somebody else could have this, but uh, I'm glad I took, took part in it. I appreciate that. Um, this is, a, I think, a, a great plan. I'm sorry we couldn't squeeze it into $150 million, but uh, there'll be some discussion about that later. Uh, at, and at the end of this process, we did not have one person who said they could not support this. Not one. And so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the passage of this bond. Uh, we'll be pleased to work, help make that happen. And now then, I welcome Sue Turner. She's going to take over. <coughs> That's a hard act to follow. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, Board of Trustees, Dr. Brown. 
I'm glad Bill reminded us that that's the way we should introduce ourselves and say hello. Otherwise, I'd say, hey, guys. Um, one of the biggest challenges we all face is staying current with technology. Students today learn differently than we did, and the use of technology is no longer one of those extra nice things that is essential to their success. Educational resources, including textbooks, are moving more and more online. Therefore, BISD must provide the necessary technology resources for our students and staff. I know the board has committed a substantial amount of financial resources to address some of the deficiencies in science education across the district. But even with these additional resources, our teachers and students still face significant <coughs> challenges because of the facilities. If you haven't already done so, I encourage you to watch the science video shared with the committee. Uh, the link is in your handout. We all know that safety and security in schools is, is discussed and on our minds all the time now. All you have to do is listen to the news. We know that it is a priority for our community, and we know that it's Dr. Brown's number one priority. Like the science labs, our board has invested a lot in this area over the past 18 months. We appreciate that. However, we know that there are still areas that need to be addressed. Looking more closely at our facilities, the committee considered additional ways to protect the assets we have. Unfortunately, our recommendation only touches the tip of that proverbial iceberg. However, Dr. Brown will share with you later a long-range planning model, what, what one, a long-range planning model might look like for BISD. The committee recommends that the board strongly consider adopting this or a similar long-range plan. Like Bill said, what we're recommending right now takes care of today. A long-range plan will address tomorrow. And as I conclude my part of this presentation, I want to say to the board, um, personally that I believe that this committee was not only passionate about taking care of our kids but addressed being financially prudent in the development of a proposal that's being presented tonight. We realize that our kids matter, our community matters, but from, from a financial standpoint this needs to be done. And now I introduce Mark Wood. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I too want to just uh, join in and say thank you so much to the board for uh, the process that you've put in place and bringing Michelle in for the entire staff and the, the effort that they went through to provide us with this information. Uh, it's been an incredible process and uh, we all uh, had a lot out of it and really uh, enjoyed the process throughout. So thank you very much. Uh, I want to talk to you about the uh, recommendations for uh, new construction. Uh, there were a lot of campuses, as you well know, that we could have put on this list uh, for recommendations for new construction. Because of that, the committee spent most of the time discussing various options uh, and are recommending to build, to rebuild North Richland Middle School, Birdville Elementary, and the Academy of West Birdville. Those are the three schools. Uh, it would be easy to have three elementary campuses and one middle school in the recommendation, but the committee respects the board and recognizes that there are financial constraints, uh, and we all know that this bond must pass, so we try our best to stay within those boundaries. <clears throat> Why these particular campuses? Uh, North Richland Middle has many issues, as you well know. The current enrollment is 892 students. Uh, there are 18 portable classrooms on that campus that need to be dealt with. Uh, the cost to replace the campus versus a major renovation uh, would be extremely high, greater than 50 percent. So, and with, with the rest of them as well, we get to the issue of you know, how much do you spend before you decide to start over and, and completely rebuild. We've got to get these students out of the portables uh, that we mentioned. Norfolk has become the portable city today that Kenyon was back in 2006. We all remember how drastic uh, problems we have with being at that point. Birdville Elementary, there are currently 437 students. That, uh, that campus, uh, this campus clearly has 
uh, a number of issues that uh, have to be dealt with. We've got structural issues, we've got drainage issues, all kinds of things that y'all know in greater detail even than what we know. And so that has to be dealt with. Continuing to patch that campus will not address the real problems. And it's just not an option. <clears throat> the Academy at West Birdville, uh, beyond North Richland and Birdville Elementary, the final decision came down to two elementary schools, Smithfield Elementary and the Academy at West Birdville. We had um, active and plenty of discussion about those two schools. And it was a tough decision uh, <clears throat> because they're both in, in such a great need. Um, the current enrollment for West Birdville is 714 students. Smithfield, uh, this past year's enrollment was 422. At the end of the day, the committee agreed to include West Birdville because there was not a good plan for that particular campus uh, other than just completely rebuilding. Priority one issues alone equal almost half of what it would cost to rebuild that school. And we, we knew we had to deal with all of the priority one uh, issues at least. Plus there are safety and security issues, science labs, technology, priority two, three, and four expenses uh, on top of that. So it became very clear to the committee that West Birdville was the, uh, the answer. But when you see the long range plan here, just a little bit uh, there at some point, you'll see our recommendations regarding the other school. I'm going to turn it over to John Cope now for continue. Thank you. BISD must continue to look for ways to provide a safe and secure environment for our students and staff. Our proposal addresses some current needs that the committee consider essential for the protection of students, such as additional cameras, car access doors, and fencing uh, around our portable classrooms. But we would all love to see all of our portable classrooms gone, but until that time, we must provide additional safety measures for them. We cannot afford hindsight when it comes to the safety of our students and faculty. Also, in the proposal is a safety vestibule at Birdville High. Birdville is the only high school where visitors can walk right in the front door and proceed to any location on campus. This is a safety concern that must be addressed. And with the changes in science education and the necessity of safety in handling lab materials and equipment, BISD must address meeting the basic state safety and space standards. And today, that's not possible. Adequate lab space is needed at all of our secondary campuses. As Sue encouraged you earlier, watch the science video she referenced, and you'll agree this is a priority for our children. The proposal also includes permanent additions at Smithfield and Watauga Middle Schools, plus a permanent structure at Watauga Elementary. These three were chosen since they are less likely to be rebuilt in the next 10 to 15 years. All other middle schools will receive specially designed portable science labs, except Northridge Middle. Northridge has the necessary lab space. These facilities are not luxuries. The science lab improvements are essential to provide a safe and effective learning environment for our students in one of the most important disciplines of our time. Technology is here to stay and all BISD students must have the ability to use and learn from current technology. Our students must be ready to compete in today's world. This proposal provides a robust wireless infrastructure across the district. With more and more mobile technology, having a wireless network to address supply and demand is not an option. This proposal also adds more technology in the classroom and on the campuses. Our students and staff must have access to technology that will run today's educational resources. BISD has been good stewards in getting seven to 10 years from the current technology but the committee learned that much of the district's obsolete technology won't run today's applications. Kristen will share the final portion of the package.
So I get to talk to you about the priority ones, the must-dos. The committee learned from the facilities assessment report that our facilities have many crucial needs. Our buildings and grounds department does a great job of keeping things running and making things look good. However, we know we're just putting lipstick on pig because many of our facilities, their age demands much more dollars to fix. And we honestly need to be placing that money back into our classrooms. This recommendation addresses legal, safety, and critical replacements. There is no fluff or any nice to haves within this recommendation. They are things like air conditioners, roofs, electrical, drainage, plumbing, and the parity issues we deal with between Birdville High School and Halton and Richland High Schools. So let me recap what all is included. Being recommended to the board from the Bond Planning Committee, our recommendation is to rebuild North Richland Middle School, rebuild the Academy at West Birdville, and rebuild Birdville Elementary, provide for safety and secure science labs, enhance security, provide for technology needs, and improve facility equity around all of our high schools, address critical renovation needs as well. BISD has done a lot with a little for a long time, and it is time for us to move forward. We are proud of our process and the product that we've come up with. We offer it to the Board of Trustees as our very best work. We believe that it will be acceptable to our community, and we believe that we can not only defend it, but also promote it to our neighbors. It is with great pride and excitement that as a member of the Bond Planning Committee, we unanimously recommend this as the most financially responsible package at $163.2 million to the board. You'll see that this is $20 million less than the 2013 bond, and we feel it is a package that the BISC voter will support. Furthermore, we feel that the bond is in the best interest of our students for BISD, its taxpayers, and its homeowners. The message you continue to hear tonight from this committee is that this is a financially prudent package. It gets, a, it gets us moving in the right direction, a direction we must continue to follow with great conviction because it is what is right for our students. The message from this committee is that doing nothing is no longer an option. Thank you. Dr. Brown. Uh, at this time, I would uh, like to ask Michelle Hughes, would you just please stand so the board can make sure you know who this outstanding professional facilitator is? Would you join me in the <laughs> So what does this mean to our taxpayers? Uh, understand uh, as we share these numbers with uh, a potential November package, we know that July 25th, we're expecting uh, certified tax rolls. So the district, uh, upon receiving those numbers, we'll be able to put a more exact number with that update, and we'll certainly ask our financial advisor to do that. But as uh, the best information we have, uh, we can get an approximation of what to expect and we we'll get specific in the, in the days ahead before the finance we call. But on an average price home of approximately $120,000, the expected tax increase to fund this proposal would be about $3 per month based on the information we have currently, or about $36 per year. And just a couple of things that came to mind we listed uh, on here is just uh, it's less than a gallon of gas, it's uh, less than a gallon of milk. So when I think about that package, and I think about those critical components, I certainly feel good about the good that this could potentially do for the investment of the package. As uh, <clears throat> was just stated, there is cost and there is risk for doing nothing. In our community, our parents, and most importantly, our students have placed their trust in us to make the recommendation and do the right thing. And we believe that our voters will, will follow suit. Also mentioned was a long-range planning model, and I was just really impressed that our committee uh, was adamant uh, about that. And I think that's so important that we not only plan for today, but we plan for the future. This is not the model, but it is just certainly a model. 
It would be a dynamic model that certainly as you gain information in the years ahead, we would tweak. We're not saying that this, these are the years, but it's just an example. When you look at our needs, and you look at just the basic needs, you infuse the growth into that, we do believe that we're going to have to make some decisions <coughs> sooner rather than later to continue to address the needs across our campuses uh, or we'll get behind and, and not feel good about the services that we're providing. The part that I feel good about is that while this fund frustrates me a little because we feel like we're catching up a lot, we're having to invest so much in our technology infrastructure, so much in our renovations to get caught up, getting science instruction uh, where it needs to be. The good news is the next time around, those dollars won't be in there. And it gives me hope uh, that, that we can have more new instruction rather than the catch up. So that's the good news, is I think there is hope that over the next two to three bonds, we can get our head above water and be very, very proud of, uh, of providing the campuses and the top facilities that our students and our staff deserve. So we'll continue to revisit that. Again, that's just an example of knowing that it's coming ever, uh, ever so many years. And uh, there'll be a lot of discussion and a lot of planning, but it's exciting just to, to have a concept that we'll put some, uh, put some teeth into very soon. The last couple of things I will address with you is just a commitment, not only a part of, of uh, members of, a, of the staff, but also of this committee, realizing that the work doesn't stop tonight. The work continues through November. It's just a sampling of, of some ways we plan to engage our community during this process. We all understand our responsibilities and what we're allowed to do. But many individuals on this farm planning committee have already expressed an interest in forming a pact, being committed to following this process through and doing whatever they need to do to communicate this package, the good it will do, and some of the challenges that will be associated with that uh, not being successful. Uh, the last slide just, just talks about you know, some of the mailers and, and things we're going to be doing. There will be a very specific plan between now and voting time, targeting our offer voters, targeting people that may not have connections to our districts, uh, a district and, and have a good understanding because sometimes it is difficult to truly understand all the complexities around education and, and needs and, and taxes and certainly there will be misinformation. So we're just committed to doing whatever is necessary to do the very best job that we can to clearly communicate to our people uh, what these needs are and just how this is going to make an incredible impact uh, on our district in the days to come. So I'd certainly like to thank all the members of the committee, but certainly those that, that agreed to speak tonight and hear clearly their um, conviction in the work that was done, the process that was used, and opportunities to collaborate. Uh, it was a very enjoyable process. Uh, it really was. I, I'm just uh, very, very pleased with how people work together and express their opinions, but were willing to, to uh, concede to the consensus of the group. And uh, it just says a lot about this community that we already know is a wonderful place to, to live. So uh, thank you again for your commitment. To, uh, I know it's a personal thing to decide on some evenings to be here to be a part of this important process. It, it means a lot to us. So to the children in our district. So thank you. So Mr. Hancock, I'll turn it back over to the board.